Palms in the earth. Giving our praise to the Most High and to His Son, Yahweh Shah. Thank you, dear Lord, for blessing us to come and get edified on this Wednesday Bible class, dear Lord. We pray that this word go out to the four corners of the earth and that it may cause your people, Israel, the elect, to awaken, dear Lord. In Yahweh Shah's name, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take plenty of notes. Touching Sirach a lot in the class today, so I'm just kind of letting you know because Sirach touches a lot, bit, a lot about what we're going in, the subject we're going in today. So, it's going to be probably the main uh, focal point is going to be in Sirach and a few other places. That's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it might be the computer. Because it, it goes through stuff fast. It's just when it comes to live streaming, it's just when it starts going slow. Mm -hmm. No, it don't go slow. Like when I'm doing, when I'm just going through stuff, it don't go slow. Mm -hmm. But when I click the live stream, that's when it starts. That's when it starts. <laughs> <laughs> Praise to the Most High, Yah, and the Son, Yah, uh, coming together on this Wednesday class to get edified in the Most High's name. Uh, the name of the class is called One Counselor of a Thousand. Uh, this scripture right here is in Sirach. We're going to get ready to touch it on. Uh, the thing is, a lot of time when we, we counsel with a lot of people, and people take counsel from many different sources, and today we're going to kind of go in to tap into some of the counsel that you need to take in your everyday walk because this is an important thing when you're dealing with people because some people deal, some people counsel, some people get counsel and some people get wrong counsel. So you need to know 
which people you should counsel with and which people you shouldn't counsel with. So we're going to go on and touch that today. Let's go to Sirach chapter 32 and verse uh, 19. Sirach chapter 32 and verse 19. <clears throat> the book of Sirach chapter 32 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Do nothing without advice. Mm -hmm. And when thou hast once done, repent not. Repeat not. The Bible said do nothing without counsel. I mean, do nothing without advice. Because a lot of time people we kind of step out on our own own way of doing things. They don't we don't take advice, especially sound advice that we should be taking. And when we do that, then you wonder why things happening in your life because you move too fast on a situation, or you didn't, or you you think in one way, but you know you you had somebody that you could have went and got counsel from, but you didn't go to go get that counsel. And we have to change our mindset in that because a lot of time in, in this walk. This is the only thing gonna help you out. It's about counseling with brothers, counseling with with people that has knowledge. Like some of the sisters might have knowledge of of, of business. Mm -hmm. They might can help somebody that's trying to start a business. They can go to the sister to get some advice on it. Some of the brothers might have might might know how to fix a, fix a car, and the sisters might need a mechanic. But she might pay a thousand dollars over here. But she got a brother right here in the congregation that can do all the work that she needs. But sometimes we don't take advice. Sometimes we just go out and we just do this, do these things, and not have these advice and not have counsel. <clears throat> Let's go to Proverbs chapter eleven and verse uh, fourteen. Proverbs chapter eleven and verse fourteen. Proverbs chapter eleven and verse fourteen. Uh huh. Where no counsel is, mm -hmm. the people fall. Well, read that again. Uh, Where no counsel is, the people fall. Where no counsel is, you fall. See, sometimes their fall might come in, in the finance, it might come in the spiritual, it might come in the physical. <clears throat> but when you don't counsel a thing, guess what? A lot of times you can get yourself set back because you don't take that counsel. We don't. But in the multitude of counselors, mm -hmm. there is safety. Now, it said, but in the multitude of counsel, counsel, there is safety. Because you don't try to seek out counsel. You, you, you thought about your actions and thought about some of the things you should do, you was trying to do, and you would seek, seek some knowledge of the stuff that you're trying to do. And that that's, that's should be a part of our everyday walk. Because a lot of decisions that we make, we make a lot of decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. But the, the, whether the sound decision that people make that's going to affect your life, you should always get counsel in. You know, like you driving down the road in your car, that's not a sin. Where there's no sin, there's no law. It's not a law that gets you driving your car. Because, you know, say for you got to drive back and forth going to work. Okay, that's understandable. But say for instance, I want to buy, I want to go, this dude around the corner selling a car, but I don't really know too much about no cars, but I like that car. Guess what? I should go to go go to somebody that knows something about cars. Hey man, brother, I, I want to buy a car, man. Could you go around me? Could, could you get, could you go around here with me? We're gonna check this car out and let's see. If, you know what I'm saying? Cause I might want to buy it. But sometimes people don't take their counsel. They go over there and they, they go buy their car. And guess what happens? Then you know, bought a limit. So you got to seek these things out in your counsel, man. Let me, let me get a precept real quick. Yeah. Give me Toga chapter four. In verse uh, 18, the book of Tobit. We don't go here a lot, but you know, Tobit is a, a good book to read as well. You know, and just like the captain is going into, man, counsel is very needed in Israel because guess what? We normally we used to making decisions what based on what we feel, not through the understanding of the scriptures. So that's one thing that we have to learn to put off with that old man and with that old woman. Well, I, it, it feel good to me. You know, it, it feel right. But what did the Bible say about it? Mm -hmm. Read that, uh, Officer Yara. Book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 18. Ask counsel of all that are wise. And that's another thing we got to learn to shape. It's nothing wrong with asking for help. Asking a brother or brothers in leadership, brother, well, what you think about this certain situation? Because guess what? We'll go to the scriptures to give you an understanding. Especially on marriage. That's one of the heaviest things in Israel, man. Because guess what? We tell brothers and sisters to prove each other first. Read on, huh? 
as counsel of all that are wise, uh -huh. and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Read that last part again. Huh? And despise not any counsel that is profitable. Don't despise the counsel that is profitable, especially if you don't want to hear that thing. Because a lot of times, people that's telling you the truth, you don't want to hear it, man. Mm -hmm. But that's the counsel that you need to take, man. So don't despise that thing that's going to profit you to get you to the kingdom. Because that's what the profit means. Profitable means. We're trying to get to the kingdom, man. So we want to always use the best counsel to make the, the best decisions to make it to the kingdom. Going on it also said take wise counsel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right? Like, if you go to somebody that you know ain't got their stuff together. Or to take for instance, you go to somebody who's not married. That's right. And man. you go going to talk about your marital issue with somebody not married. How can they give you any good counsel on that thing? Right. But you go to somebody who's been married 30, 35 years, they're going to be able to tell you some stuff. So that's wise counsel. I'm not going to go to my my brother who's been married for a uh, ain't married, or a brother who's been married for a year. I'm going to go to the older gentleman who's been married for 30 years to get counsel. On top of that, the brother that ain't been married, but guess what? He the whole about him. And you're going to try to go and get counsel from him. But now nah, he's going to tell you, man, leave him, man. She'll forget her. Right. Move mm -hmm. on to the next. Now, the fact is a scripture for that. Go to Sirach chapter 8, verse 17. For the body to answer all things, man. See, because a lot of times when people try to do that, they, they, they come, they come to fall in short of Sirach, Sirach chapter 8 and verse 17. Read that out. So Sirach <clears throat> chapter 8 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Consult not with a fool, mm -hmm. for he cannot keep counsel. Because he cannot keep counsel. You know, you should consult with a fool. And that's a, that's a person that's not not necessarily a, a person that's like a, 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 a idiot, but guess what? A person that's uh, don't know this matter. If I don't know nothing about hooking up uh, 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 headlights, how you gonna come to me about the headlight for me to get it? I'm a fool in that. Right. And to take it a step further, how we gonna go to the white man and teach us about the Bible mm -hmm. when this ain't this not his Bible? That's right. That's, right. that's what a lot of people do. They consulting with a fool about the scriptures, and that's why they got a misunderstanding <coughs> about the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let's go over to Sirach chapter 6 and then Sirach. Sirach chapter 6, verse 6, right quick. Get that read it up. Sirach 6 and 6. Mm -hmm. Be in peace with men. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. It said, the Bible said, have but one counselor of a thousand. The thing is, when people get in that one counselor of a thousand, the person that you trusted to get their counsel, Sometimes you arguing with that person and that, that person that, that you might that person that you that you that you said you prayed to the Lord about that you getting counsel from and you getting the, you seeking the counsel from them and you might be arguing back and forth with them but in your mindset you should think back like well I prayed to the Lord for this counsel I ain't well maybe I'm, I might be going off maybe I need to you know what I'm saying check my spirit see what this person is saying see because and when you have that one counsel of a thousand, that means that person, that's the person that you trust. That's the person that you should be, you should go to, and you know that this person, whether you, whether you like it or not, they're going to tell you something. You know they're going to tell you something. But guess what? Can you be accepted to the things that they say? That's how our mindset should always go to. Guess what? If this, the counsel that I'm taking, dang, do I trust this counsel? <laughs> You know, because a lot of time, even dealing, even like we, like us sitting at the table, we dealing with the congregation. Sometimes we give brothers and sisters counsel. Sometimes brothers and sisters don't take counsel. But the thing is, brothers don't give you counsel about stuff that they don't know. Brothers don't give you counsel about stuff because brothers have seen it. That's just how I go. Go ahead, huh? And eleven back on what you said, like Proverbs eleven fourteen. It said, "When in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, because." Like I said, you want to find that one brother counselor that you can get, but you also have a multitude of people that, guess what, got different characteristics about themselves right. that might fit your life or mm -hmm. might fit your world as well. Brother, come ask me about cars. I don't know, but guess what? Nehemiah show up under that hood. Right. Let, me, let, me, let me direct you to Nehemiah. Right. So you're going to have safety in a multitude of counselors, but like I said, you got to find that one person that you can know, like I said, you can truly get that truth from, like, no matter how you go to them. No matter how much you want them to tell you what's wrong, they're going to tell you what's right. They're going to tell you what's wrong. 
That's right. That's all I want. Let's go to First uh, John chapter four and verse one. See, because that's that's how our mindset should always. It should always. Guess what? Know your know who you counseling with, man. That's why I say have one counsel of a thousand, man. If you if you get counsel from every single person, man, you gonna be tossed to and fro, man. Read that up. Book of First John. Yeah. Four and one. Four and one. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Read that part again, huh? Beloved, believe not every spirit. Because guess what, man? You can't believe every spirit, man. That's why you should have one counsel among thou, especially when you're dealing in counsel. You can't you can't believe everything somebody because a lot of times somebody say somebody say something about being a knight, and I'm sitting up here, I'm like, man, I know this brother's spirit. I know he don't roll this way. But guess what? Me consulting with somebody. They don't, they don't too much know him as much as I know him. Guess what? And I took counsel from that person against against a brother that I know? Mm. Well, hold up, man. Brother, are you taking the right counsel or what? Because sometimes people don't know that. If you know and you're dealing with a person, you know their characteristics, and you see and you hear somebody else say something, you're like, uh, right. I don't think I can trust this. You know what I'm saying? You might not tell them that, but in your mind, you're like, no, nah, I ain't. I ain't. I'm going to take that with a grain of salt, man, because I know, I know this person that he's talking about. But when you talk to that person, they tell you the same thing, then you're like, dang, it's kind of, <coughs> kind of mind blown. But I'm going to have to ask first to see if that's true. I can't just sit up and take just because you said it. That ain't, what, that ain't how, how, how it's always, that ain't how it's, how it's supposed to be. We don't know. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but mm -hmm. try the spirit. But do what I, but try the spirit. You got to try the spirit, man. When you're trying to seek out a counsel in this walk, you got to try the spirit, man. You, you should want a person that's going to tell you right or wrong. He, man, you, man, you ready? You right or wrong, they're going to tell you the truth. One thing, when I, I mean, when I first got around <laughs> McAfee, and man, at first I was examining this brother, man. I'm going to tell you something about him, man. No matter how people, you can perceive whatever you want, I'm going to tell you something I learned about that brother. He wants the truth no matter, no matter what. I don't give a damn. I mean, when that brother out there teaching, nine year old Edomite, guess what? Maccabee gave the little man his judgment, man. <laughs> I'm just, that's just what he is because guess what? Red, hate it or love it, he gonna tell you how it is. People just don't, some people don't like it. Some people just can't take that, man. But I found out about that brother, I said, man, you know what? I'm gonna kind of check this brother out, man. He's he, he pretty cool, man. Because no, regardless of the fact, brother wants the truth. Start examining Ben and I. And all of us examine each other the same way. They're like, dang, these brothers in the truth for the truth. Because some people in the truth not for the truth. And we're going to go into that too, though. But even to touch on that, like I said, to take it a little bit farther, that also go into what? Watching different camps, too. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, y'all have to be careful of that. You know, we always say that, man, because we never kind of had nobody to kind of teach us hands-on on how to watch out for certain stuff. We kind of had to learn it on our own. Right. Mm -hmm. So now y'all got brothers that y'all can be hands-on mm -hmm. with to kind of give y'all ups and downs <laughs> about certain situations on what certain brothers and sisters watch and who they watch. You have to be careful, brothers, man. Mm -hmm. Brother may sound good intellectual. Brother can speak well, man. Mm -hmm. But guess what? That wasn't a correct interpretation of that scripture, man. Or that wasn't a correct breakdown of that scripture. But he made it sure sounded good though. Things sounded good and he can he can woo you with it. You know? I'm talking about woo you with you want to make sure that the thing is going precept upon precept. You know the fact, I'm, I'm gonna show y'all something right quick. I, I'm glad you see it there. I'm gonna take my class in a different direction, but <laughs> it's, it's good though. Let's go to uh Acts chapter 18 right quick. I'm gonna show y'all something, then we'll go back. Because that's I'm definitely right. Because a lot of times people can speak and they can speak eloquent. They know the scripture. You're like, ooh, this person bringing it out. <laughs> but sometimes people be off a little bit. <laughs> Acts chapter 18, verse, start at verse 24. <clears throat> Acts 18 and 24. Uh-huh. And a certain Jew named Apollos, uh -huh. born in Alexandria, an eloquent man, uh -huh. and mighty in the scripture. Now, this is talking about Apollos. This is one of the things, this is one of the brothers that Paul was close to. It, you know, as they as they met each other and they got around each other, him and Paul got real cool. Okay. He said Apollos was a he was eloquent and he was a he was real mighty in the scriptures. Watch this. 
we don't came to Ephesus. 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 Mm -hmm. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was instructed in the way of the Lord. Read on. And being fervent in the spirit, mm -hmm. he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, uh -huh. knowing only the baptism of John. Now, uh -huh. but guess what? He was just knowing only the baptism of John. Uh -huh. See, knowing only the baptism. What did John do? John dumped, dumped him up under the water. But watch this. Read on. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. So, but he just telling, he, he, yeah, he's talking boldly in the synagogue. Read on. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, mm -hmm. they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now they tell them, hey, 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 brother. Now, Christ that came on the sea. I know you talked about John Baptist, the Baptist now. But Christ, he, they, they expounded to him, showing him the more better way that we don't dunk up under the water anymore. Right. See, but he was mighty in the scriptures, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And he was an eloquent man. The same thing I'm going into. Man, that's a perfect example right there, man. That's the same thing I'm going into. Read on, I... And when he was dis disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. Mm -hmm. Who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. Now, he now he's talking about grace, which who who, who came to bring grace? Christ. So now he give he's got the more better understanding of the baptism that we don't dunk up on the water. Guess what? We're gonna be washed by the water of the word. So now he's he he okay, he got it. So now he can go help other people and tell them about the grace. Read on up. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Mm -hmm. And that publicly, uh -huh. showing by the scriptures that Yahweh was Christ. Now, guess what? Now he can help more, more, more clearly, because now he got understanding. So just like when you you watching these different things, different videos and stuff like that, and these people might be mighty in the scripture, it might be eloquent, but sometimes people might be a little off. Guess what? That's why we leave our description below upon our videos, because guess what? If y'all see something in what we bringing out, we say we 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 leave our number on the description. Call us up. Hey, hey, brother. Uh, that that was off. Guess what? But you got to go to the scripture and show us how that went off. You ain't gonna just tell us that it's off and we just gonna believe you. No, you gonna have to go to the scripture, show us what we went off it, and if we went wrong, guess what we'll do? We'll get right back on the on on uh, uh the YouTube or Facebook, wherever wherever we on, and tell them, look, hey, no, that was the wrong way. This is the way. You know, brother called us and he explained, he showed us something a little bit better. Now we got to understand it. Y'all get it? <clears throat> Let's read a little bit more on it. Go, go to uh, chapter 19 and 1. <clears throat> 19 and 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, mm -hmm. came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Mm -hmm. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Uh -huh. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Uh-huh, read. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Now these people talking, these the people in the upper coast that, <coughs> that, that Paul is talking to right now. Drop down to verse uh, verse 5 right quick and go on get, so we can get back to the class. Verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized now, in the name of the Lord. Yahweh. When they heard this, they heard the words of the Lord. This is what this wasn't the water baptism dunking up on the water. This was when they heard this, they was baptized. Mm -hmm. They didn't say when they were dunked. They said when they heard this. So, but this is like I say, there was an example on how when you watch a different thing, they might be eloquent and they might be mighty in the scriptures, but guess what? Sometimes people doctrine might be a little off than what you learn. And that's also shots fired at Christianity, man. Um, <laughs> you know, we always got to hold me in on this. Yeah, got to, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And what was it? Verse, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1 John chapter 4. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's the one that took. That's the precept on it. It's a rock six and seven, proving a friend. Shall so always prove a friend, man. Read. <clears throat> Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Every spirit that confesses that Yahweh shall come in the flesh is of God. Because some people don't even believe in Christ came in the flesh. 
But you got to confess that he came in the flesh, man. Man, how you... The thing is, what's so crazy when people saying it about Christ, talking about he didn't come in the flesh, then why why do you have a time period called B.C. Oh. and A.D.? That's pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> but they'll say that. they like, no, nah, Christ didn't, man. Y'all believe in a false deity, man. Christ didn't come, but why, why did they got B.C. and why they got A.D.? That's before Christ, and it's after the death of Christ. So that's something that they got to answer. Read on, now. Verse 3, and every spirit that confesses not that Yahweh Shah has come in the flesh is not of God. Mm -hmm. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. I just wanted to do a little shot fire too, but some people hey, he is the Antichrist. This is what it is, man. <laughs> some people is the spirit of Antichrist, man. That's why, do you think you want to take counsel with those people like that, man? If that's not what you believe, you can't take counsel and stuff that you don't aid. If I'm not if, like, I, our favorite thing, I don't subscribe to that. <laughs> if I don't subscribe to that, I ain't going to take counsel in that thing, man. Like we say, even read verse 1 again. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. How do we try the spirit? We try the spirit by making sure that they spirit or the things that they say line up with the Bible. You know, are they keeping the law, statutes, and commandments? You know, brothers growing their beards, wearing their fringes, congregating on the Sabbath, you know, keeping the high holy days. You got to, like we said, we know it takes some time, but you want to get brothers that's in a comfortable position that's doing that and have been doing that for years at a time. Mm -hmm. If you know brothers and sisters, mainly brothers that's giving the counsel, ain't keeping the high holy days and you trying to get some counsel from them, you know that's not the way, man. You know brothers ain't wearing their fringes while they teaching. Come on, man. That is not the way. That should, you should automatically identify stuff and run the other way, man. Run like hell towards the other way because you see already that they ain't lining up with us, said the Lord God, man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'll come. On. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Now, that's definitely true, I'll. because guess what? Sometimes people, when you when you see certain things, guess what? It, it, it's that should always, should always flick your attention like, dang, this brother right here, man, uh, can he grow a beard? <laughs> <laughs> dang, he stand up and he stand up on camera and he faces into the east and he praying like, dang, brother ain't got no friends. He don't see no zig zigs or nothing. <laughs> How long this brother been in the truth? For real, that's the first thing he had. 2 Corinthians 13 to 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Cool, that's an everyday thing that a person should look at, man. Guess what? Just like if I'm dealing with smoking, man. I, I was personally, because I used to smoke cigarettes. Man. I remember I was, I was young. I used, I used to smoke cigarettes. When I first, I first got in, wow, I, had, I was smoking. Man, the Lord convict me like a mug. And I had to let it go. I had to let it go. But I'm gonna tell you something. I had to examine myself while I'm in the faith. Is I'm halfway in this or I'm halfway out of this? That's something that we have to get our mindset. Like, are you in this walk? And that's heavy too because we understand when you come into the truth, we know you still gonna be dealing with things. But guess what? We have to overcome them things, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, brothers gotta fight that thing, man. That's some brothers got to fight, man, because guess what? You defiling your temple. You know what I'm saying? So, I would say, if any man defiling his temple, what? We brothers should know that. Him will God destroy. <laughs> Bring it upon you lung cancer, throat cancer, man. Mm -hmm. All different type of things. He might make your fingers fall off at the tip or something. <laughs> you know, any type of judgment, man. So, these no. sins we constantly have to <laughs> overcome, man. Right. We all these brothers used to spoke up here. I could smoke and roll with the best of them, man. <laughs> but now I'm smoking and rolling with the most high, man. That's right. With, it's smoking in these scriptures. That's the main oh, thing, man. Oh, like man. a lot of other brothers, so you know, you look at them lips, man. <laughs> look at the fingertips, man. Shake that thing, man. We can do it, man. Yeah, you can do it. You can do but it, see, man. But see, the thing is, guess what, man? Read that part over again, verse 5, man. Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Read on. Prove your own self. You got sometimes, guess what? You got to learn how to prove yourself. Because mm -hmm. guess what? Oh, man, I went a week without doing it. Mm -hmm. Man, I done went a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dang, I went a year. 
you proving yourself, man. I ain't going back, man. All right. Man, I don't give a dang. They give me a thousand dollars. I want to smoke another. Right. You got to prove yourself in that thing, man. Any little detail of your life, man, you got to overcome your flesh to make it to the kingdom. That's what people don't understand. You got to overcome yourself, man. Right. That's why the spirit and the flesh war against each other. Because you got to overcome that old man, man, or that old woman, man. Brother, just plug the class for Sabbath, man. Gun on that <laughs> the spirit, man. Gun <laughs> But that's what we got to do. We got to overcome that old man, man. Mm -hmm. We got to do that, man. That's the only way we press. You're not going to make it to the kingdom if you don't overcome. You think the most I, when he told you, told you, you was just like, and you come in, you still a nigga. Mm -mm. It's not going to work, man. Because he told you what you was, but guess what? You want to be what the world the world told you to be, a nigga. We can't live as niggas, man. We got to live as Israelites. We got to let our light shine as Israelites. Read on now. Be in the faith. Prove your own self. Mm -hmm. know, ye, know ye not your own self. He says, man, know ye not your own self. Do you, don't you know your own self? Know ye not your own self, man. <coughs> Because guess what? You know, I, okay, man, if this brother right here smoke like Cheech and Chong and I know I just quit, I'm not going to go around there, brother. That's right. I should know myself that I can't handle that. Because mm -hmm. you get to go in there, ooh, I don't know if he's cooking <laughs> chicken in this mug. I don't know if he's eating fruit loops in this mug. <laughs> but guess what? You, if you know yourself, you shouldn't put yourself in that situation. That's counseling with your own self. If you knew, if you know that yourself can get in there, and you when you go around these people and they and they guess what, boy, it's like he's smoking the best you ever smelled in your life, man. Just one hit, man. Hey, it would be all right. Just that one time. Guess what? Then you walk outside. You like, dang, this bus is getting really close. You <laughs> know, <laughs> because you don't know. Guess what? You got to be, you got to be, you got to be steadfast in the truth, man. <laughs> you got to be steadfast. But keep reading now. How that Yahweh Shah is in you, except you be reprobate. Except you be reprobate. Because guess what? When you be reprobate, what happens? What happen when you reprobate? You believe a lie. So now you, it's hard for you to examine yourself when you believe in a lie. That's the thing that we don't want our mindset to go to. We don't want our mindset to be in as a reprobate. We want our mindset to be on 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 Christ in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We should want that, man. Because then when you reprobate it, guess what? A reprobated mind will believe a lie. That's what the scriptures say. And we can't change it. Uh, read on up. But I trust that you shall know that we are not reprobated. But we ain't reprobated, though. Read on, though. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Mm -hmm. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest. Because guess what? That's the honest way to do, man. We got to do the things that are dead. We got to do the things that you know. Okay, man, I can't. I know I know myself. I know I can't handle certain things. I'm not going to put myself in that situation. Because sometimes people put themselves in that situation knowing what they finna do. Guess what? And even even with the wives dealing with their husband, husband dealing with their wife, guess what? You know, dang, you you came home and you really don't feel like it. And guess what? You just in the mood to say the right thing to get her to get her going. Or she say the right thing to get you going. You know what you're doing. But guess what? You picked that battle. You picked that. We can't live like that, though. Go to Sirach chapter 11, verse 10. We can't live like that, man. You know what you're doing. Because when you when you, when you you are uh, dealing in it, you bring it on. Matter of fact, start at verse 9. When you're dealing in it, you, you find yourself to be falling stuff, man. Sometimes, man, let me tell you something, man. I was so, I was so upset on the phone, man. I had to get off the phone with Nehemiah, man, earlier today. Man, that woman had me hot, man. <laughs> it's, it's 5 o'clock. I'm up in Louisville. I got to come all the way back to the solo and make the class on time, man. Man, I'm, I'm rushing. She tell me, you can't park your trailer right here. This is, do I always go in the park? 
she made me park all the way around the back. I went around the other side of the building, just blocked off. Oh man, now I got the bag all the way out in the street. Come on back around, but I'm mad. I said, Nehemiah, I gotta get out the phone, man. Throw some prayers up, man. It ain't good right now. Ox said, Jerry Ball, stay in spirit. I said, all right, Ox. He said it again. Stay in spirit. I got out of the truck, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, just like a weight came off my shoulder. That's good counseling. All right. I needed that, man. Because I ain't going to lie to you, I wasn't in the right mindset. Cause I had the mindset, guess what? That woman finna hear everything I had on my mind, man. And I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but it was finna come out. <laughs> you know if you're going to call me, run the whole damn truck up here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, <what's> up? <laughs> but guess what, though? That was some good counseling, man. Just a little, just those little things, those little details that you deal with your everyday walk with people that, that you counsel with on a daily basis, those little details help you in this walk, man. Yeah, that is, man. You want to constantly be around brothers and sisters that keep you in the spirit, too. You know, to kind of keep you in a positive uh, attitude, especially going through the scriptures, even when dealing with the sisters. You know, like problems that y'all may have coming up. We're dealing with certain situations with your husband. You want to talk to that positive sister to kind of keep you on track or keep you level in the scriptures. You know, that's the whole point. You know, especially with the brothers as well. You know, being around righteous brothers, man, that's the whole point. Because even that one spirit that you know ain't all the way in the truth, man, sometimes those spirits be powerful, man. And, and they, they tugging on you to get you to come up out of the truth constantly, man. Oh, and that's true, cause, cause guess what? I'm gonna tell you, just like the little smallest detail, that how we, how we, I say when you dealing with your your husband and wife, y'all dealing with each other, man, or or even your everyday walk dealing with people, man. Sometimes you just got to man walk away from things, mm. because sometimes that stuff will pull you in. You in full fledged arguing. She arguing about the manure, and you arguing about the uh, apocrypha, and y'all arguing back and forth, and y'all saying two different things. You then you sitting around looking like dang, what the hell are we arguing for? Because she arguing her point and you arguing your point, y'all ain't gonna never come to agreement because y'all arguing about two different things. <laughs> you just think about it. next time you getting into an argument with your wife or your uh, or the person you trying to try or whatever, break the argument out and start listening to what they say. Then you like dang, we ain't even arguing about the same thing. <laughs> that's that's simple. <laughs> that's simple. That's how people do. Read that up. Sirach so chapter 11 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Strive not in a matter that concerneth thee not. He says, strive not in a matter that concerneth thee not. Read on. And sit not in judgment with sinners. Uh-huh. Read. My son, meddle not with, with many matters. You can't be meddling with many matters, man. Sometimes when we look at man, she come in and do something, hey, man, let them make it, man. Because you already know what's going to come, in, come about. You already know, like, man, she trying to, hey, man, I think she trying to play with me, man. I say you trying to play with me? Hey, hey, not today, not today. I don't do that. Hey, you got you got to check your spirit on there, man. You got to be able, you got to get your mindset to check your spirit. See, because a lot of people won't check their spirit, so that so that thing it manifests. It just take a little bit, man. And here we go, loop de loop. And guess what? It is on. It's on. Read up. My son, meddle not with many matters. Mm -hmm. For if thou meddle much, thou shalt not be innocent. Yeah, you won't be innocent. Because guess what? You you when you meddle with too much stuff, man, guess what? You ain't gonna be found innocent in nothing. You gonna make yourself look like a fool, man. You sit up here arguing about some stuff, man, why she cooking that chicken so fast? <laughs> You come in there and she mad in the mug because you like, hey, you gonna taste the chicken, but why you cooking that chicken so fast? <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> you just melting by any little detail, man. Let people make it, man. I don't care if you're going through things. If you're going through things that bad, guess what, man? Go on, on to the room by yourself or something, man. Hey, what's wrong? Uh, she come in, babe, what's wrong? Hey, man, just give me a little time. Just give me a little time. Because sometimes you need a little time to get away, man. Because it ain't for you to, just because you, you see something, it ain't for you to attack it just because you see it every time. It's not for the, not for you to do that. Read on, now. 
and if thou follow, if thou follow after, thou shalt not obtain. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou escape by fleeing. And you won't even escape by fleeing, cause now you done, you done rouse oh, this spirit man. up. They following y'all around the house. <laughs> and, uh, all back in your head, pointing your finger. <laughs> guess what? Because guess what? You could have walked away from it in the first place. Right. You could have done it, but guess what? You want? You had it on your mind too. And guess what? Guess what? And, 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 and she probably had it on her mind too, but she was holding hers in. But now you done trigger her. Right. Now she ready to go just like you ready to go. Come on. Ding, ding. Now you ring the bell. Ding, ding. Let's get it. Now, now they ready to go. And this is good counsel that Ock is bringing out because just like Ock says, brothers deal with that on a on a day to day basis. Sisters deal with that, especially in marriages. You know how could, one day it could be up, next day it could be down, or a few days it could be down. Mm -hmm. You know, so you want to make sure that you apply these things so that it's less uh, less division up in the house. And that's what the scriptures is made for. We just got to apply the counsel. Go ahead, uh. Come on, there. Let's go to Proverbs, huh? No, go ahead. You, no, no, go ahead. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4, and, uh, verse 20. I'm going to show you something in this right quick. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. Mm -hmm. My son, attend to my words, and incline thine ear to my saying. Uh -huh. Let them not depart from thine eyes. This is the law, statutes, and commandments. Supposed to be declining, we're supposed to be inclining our ears to the law. <coughs> we're supposed to have this man in bed with this man. Read. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Mm -hmm. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. He's supposed to keep these laws in the midst of thine heart. This this is our guideline, man. Read. For they are life unto those that find them. Uh-huh. And help to all their flesh. Because this, this is what these laws that these commandments do for us, man. This is our life. This is our flesh, man. Read. Keep thy heart with all diligence, mm -hmm. for out of it are the issues of life. Uh, out of your mind is the what? For out of it are the <laughs> issues of life. Because guess what? Your mind plays tricks on you like a bug. That's where your issue started. It's in your mind. You got an issue. The issue starts right in your mind. You see something. What the? <laughs> Boy, it's on. That issue started right in your mind. We got to guess what? Them issues that start in your mind. Same way it came in your mind, same way you can ask the issue, no, no, no. Not today. Sometimes you gotta do that, man. Hey. You don't want you don't wanna find yourself being a fool out here, man. You don't want you don't want yourself, man, hey, going too far on things because guess what? People people tend to do that. Because they got issues. Everybody got issues in their mind. Everybody, man, I don't care. Man, you can wake up in the morning, man, you just be upset about something. Why is it so damn cold in here? <laughs> Any little detail. Issue start right in your mind. Start praying, man. Start fasting, man. Gird up our loins in this walk, man. Time to gird up our loins. <clears throat> let's go to, uh, let's go to Sirach. Let me tell you something. Sirach chapter 3 and 23. Rock chapter 3 and verse 23. Let me get ready. Get up out here in a minute. So Rock chapter 3 and verse 23. But it's a Rock chapter 3, verse 23. Be not curious in unnecessary matters. Mm -hmm. For more things are shewed unto thee that men understand. He said, Don't be curious in unnecessary matters. Just like Ox said, man. Sometimes people. People curiosity, what they say? Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> That's a blemish as hell too, cause the, the, the line of Judah, huh? Curiosity killed the cat. Huh? <laughs> Try to go see what the mother nations doing. Want to go see what they doing? Curiosity, man. Read on. Verse for, yeah, for many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Because many people might be deceived by their own vain opinion. Man, we talking to Brood and Weak, man. Boy, what they say, man? That brother, man, three or four hours, we see the stronghold coming out, but boy, that boy has so many opinions. And, man, if it wasn't for the conference call, man, we probably stayed on the phone with that brother all night, man. <laughs> own vain opinion. Own vain own opinion. Vain. Many people be deceiving this walk for their own vain opinion. Because a lot of times, guess what people don't do? 
is the council. Mm -hmm. It goes right back down to the council. Because the Bible tells us do nothing without counsel. That's right. And the let me back on box. Proverbs 3 and 5 say, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Because mm -hmm. when you lean into your own understanding, you're not getting a balanced thought process of the situation. You're just going one direction, whatever in your mind. You can be set, like I say, going straight at it with a bad intentions, but somebody might need to tell you, hold on, I, hold on, hold on, look at it from this point of view. And when you look at it from that point of view, because they on the outside looking in, oh, I, I couldn't see it like that. And then you'll back up off of it. But, you know, we get caught up in our own thoughts. That's what the brother said. He literally, and I know people like that, get caught in their own thoughts. And then when you get caught in your own thoughts, what you think? The worst. Mm -hmm. You never think the best. It's always the worst scenario. Mm -hmm. What if this happened? What if this happened? And like the scripture say. Those people not trusting the Lord with all their heart. Mm -hmm. They lean into their own understanding. And that's going to take you down destruction because you're not going to think the best things could happen out of the situation. They never do. Watch this. Go back to uh, uh, Sirach 3 and 24. Watch this. We read the rest of it because it's been explained mm -hmm. exactly what he just yep. said, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Mm -hmm. And an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. An evil <laughs> suspicion. That's what, that overthrow your judgment. Mm -hmm. That's what, look, it's easy, it's easy to get your mindset taken away somewhere else, man. Mm -hmm. Guess what? The Most High sets up things. He gave you a whole family of people. Why do you think he gave you a, a family of pe people? He told you to gather around these people. Exhort one another. Why do you, th why do you think he, he said, and so much the more? Why do you think he said that for? Because he set things up, and we just got to use the counsel and use our resources that the Lord set up. We don't we don't see the thing. We go right back to our old. We go we lead around to what the Lord set up. We go back into our world, and when guess what? In that world, we consumed by the world. Because hmm. even like we said, another prime example. We're not listening to the council. One of these we always love to use, man. In First Kings. Go ahead, yeah, brother. On point, man. That's yeah, just the spirit, man. That's the spirit, man. Go ahead, huh? No, go ahead, man. No, nah, go ahead. Don't bring it up. Nah. Go ahead. <laughs> but you can't give me that's a rock, chapter 5, verse 2, saying the same thing that brothers are saying. Like I said, I'm glad that I, I know I had it. I don't even know why I pulled it. And one thing that I truly, truly <laughs> understand that our people don't grasp at this point is that we are a nation of people. Uh -huh. The Lord didn't make us to be individual likes, individual niggas. We went into slavery together. Right. We're going to come out together. Yeah. But, but meaning why I'm saying that, we used to have elders. Yeah. We used to be able to go to the council of the <laughs> elders. And then we had the leaders. Mm -hmm. That was another set of council. If they couldn't answer the question, they go to the ancients. They call them the ancients. We don't have any ancients. We 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 probably the elders, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, but we used to have it all lined up. So we trying to get back to that point. And our people can't grasp that concept that, oh, we can do our stuff internally. We don't have to go to the, the other nations to get approval mm -hmm. or, or, or to figure out a matter. We have to do it internally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, because that's that's what man, we always say the same thing. When we go back to God's laws, we don't need police. That's true. We don't. God laws are perfect. He said his laws is perfect. So why would we need another nation to police us and God's laws are perfect? Because if you don't commit adultery, if you don't do fornication, if you don't smoke, if you don't uh, 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 sin, guess what? Why, guess what? Why would why would we need somebody to help us? Uh, why we need another nation to, to police us and we ain't we ain't sinning? That's right. Cause you ain't doing nothing. You chilling like a mug. Go ahead, uh. Read that, uh, Officer Yard for Sirach 5 and 2. <clears throat> Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. In thy what? Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. Uh-huh, read on up. walk in the ways of thy heart. Because just like what the brothers was doing, what they was pulling, a lot of times our own mind, even suspicion, and guess what? We take that thing and lump it as a whole. 
not even getting a good inquisition into things or doing a diligent search. Read on now. And say not, who shall control me for my work? For my what? For my works. Read on now. For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. The Most High God is letting you know what that really is. That's pride that's on a lot of brothers and sisters. You know, that's pride. A lot of times, like we said, we used to doing our own thing, listening to our own mind. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Nigga, you ain't going to tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, but the Most High is letting us know that that's, that's pride that's on us, and we got to shake that thing. Go ahead. Hold on, hold on. Read that again. Mm -hmm. That same uh, scripture, please. Which one? Verse 2 or 3? Verse 2. Verse 2, chapter 5, Sirach. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. And that, I was wanting to touch on the strength right there. Just because you've been doing something forever today, don't mean you know everything about it. You still even want to get counsel on that. You still want to know, am I doing the right thing? You know, cats are always thinking, of, I've been doing this for 30 years. You might have been doing it for 30 years wrong. So it's, even, if, even if you've still been doing it, ain't nothing wrong with still getting counsel on that. That's all I wanted on that. And I, I want to, on that, following what he said, it depends on what it is. You know what I'm saying? It, it, the subject matter matters. If this brother been laying brick for 30 years, and I haven't, and I'm finna go ask Brandon, he ain't never touched a brick or mortar in his life. Cause I want I want to hear some. I want him to agree with me. You know what I'm saying? I know it's it's not a good idea. It might not be a good idea, but it's some money involved. So I want to get this money. I know he gonna agree with me because he's about the same thing. But I come to y'all and say, man, what you think about this right here? Nah, bro, I don't I don't think this. Matter of fact, I give you up to date. I went to go pick up an uh, engine. The guy said, I don't think that's gonna fit in your van. I said, okay. He been doing this right. So I called a dude and say, say, the dude said it ain't gonna fit in my van. Man, you what you think? <laughs> Man, what you mean what I think? I ain't been doing this. This, this dude been doing this. He dealing with this type of stuff. He said he don't think it's a good idea, so I'm not doing it. But if I would listen to old boy about the money, he would have pushed you, go do it, and tear your equipment up. But he ain't the one dealing with that in that subject matter. So I listen to the person that's dealing in that subject matter. Yeah, that's right. Matter of fact, let's go get this here precept. Uh, what well, I was kind of touching on. Let's go to Sirach chapter 37, verse uh, 10, right quick. Sirach chapter 37, verse 10. Matter of fact, go to verse, start of verse 7. Sirach 37 and 7. Every counselor extolled counsel. But there is some that counsel it for himself. Could get like I, I, like I go into. Some people do counsel for themselves for their own gain. Read. Beware of a counselor, and and know before what need he has. Mm -hmm. For he will counsel for himself. Cause guess what? Some people counsel for themselves. Like I go into. He could have very well. Cause the dude want to make some money off of it. You know he didn't care about what I had over there, man. He didn't care about his equipment or nothing. No, I just want you to take it. Guess what? You you're broke down side of the road. He be sitting there mad in the mud. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But he wanted he wanted for his own gain though. But I got had got counsel on him. Right. So I'm the fool if I don't listen to the counsel that I know has more experience than the fool who want me to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Read. Lest he cast a lot upon thee. Mm -hmm. And say unto thee, the way is good. Now he telling this is what he told mm -hmm. Nehemiah. The way is good. <laughs> Just put it in your van. <laughs> Read. The, what thy way is good, and afterward he stand on the other side. And do what? To see what shall be Now he trying to see, man, it's going to work out. He's like, dang. Did you make it? <laughs> yeah, I knew he was. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Sit man. back counting that money. Yeah, that's it, man. Sorry. Read verse 10, man. Verse 10. Consult not with one that suspected thee, mm -hmm. and hide thy counsel from such as envy. Now that's something that we have to deal with, too. When he said, hide the counsel from, from one that envy thee. Man, if I know, man, look here. Man, I love this brother, man. Man, he just a great teacher, man. Hey, man, you think you should come to me for counsel? Oh, man, you're a great teacher. I love you, man. He's like, bro, you don't even know me, bro. But I, I, know, I love you, man. He said, man, bro, do you think I should go uh, divorce my wife? Hell yeah, man, you're a great teacher. <laughs> 
No. No. You can't do that, man. You cannot do this. No. If somebody, somebody got, some people get blinded from that because yeah. they love that person so much, uh -huh. they get blinded and don't uh -huh. give good, don't give good counsel. Uh -huh. We can't, we can't do that, man. And and like I could, McAfee made a good point too, and it it goes back and forth because when they say trust not thy strength, yeah, you might have been hooping for thirty years, twenty years, but guess what? Your game can always be perfected. You might have been in this Bible for 20, 20 right? but you can always grow. You understand what I'm saying? So even though you might be that hooper of hoopers, you still, like Jordan them, the main, the greatest players, they was always in the gym working harder. They're before everybody. They're after everybody left. You know what I'm saying? Because then you start becoming stubborn a little bit when you, because that's pride. Pride leads to stubborn. Oh, yeah, I've been doing this, so yeah, I know what's right. You still can take counsel. Don't never get too high on that thing. So it go both ways. You're right. Yeah, you got to make sure you take the counsel from the right brother. At the same time, like that scripture just brought out, make sure you take counsel and that brother giving you the right counsel for what he's trying to give it to you for. That's right. And, and, and taking counsel don't mean that that's the what you have to do. Mm -hmm. That means you just giving, you taking in that understanding, the way out the the options. All right. Yeah. You know. And we gonna we finna get ready to touch in, touch that in a minute. Go, mm -hmm. go jump down the verse. What you say? Just one thing um, about the strength and, and and things like that. It's not the counsel of their mouth or of their mind is go to the Bible and get counseled. Exactly. That's where the counseling is at. Mm -hmm. They run their mouth all day. Tell them to prove it to you. Come. Exactly. The Bible say prove all things. All man. Things. Matter of fact, jump down to verse 12 right quick. 37 verse 12. Verse 12. Right. But be continually with a godly man uh -huh. whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. He said whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Those, those, those are the good, good counsels that you should be seeking out the, the ones that are keeping the commandments of the Lord, man. Read on though, if it explains some more. Whose mind is according to thy mind, mm -hmm. and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Yeah. Now, when you got tribulation with you, hey man, he ain't, he ain't finna just bring you down. Brother finna go to the scriptures and finna help you out. And guess what, brother gonna build you up. That's how, that's how you sorrow with somebody. You build somebody up through the scriptures. Through the Lord, what the Lord say. That's why we're in the truth, because of the most high, the most high in his words, man. Read verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand. Uh -huh. For there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. He said, let the counsel, the good counsel that you get from this Bible, you got to let it stand, man. That's what that's what it's all about. Let's go into the we're gonna go into the last four. We're gonna go get about it. I catch a precept. Go ahead. Uh, let me get to Rock, uh, chapter twenty-one and verse thirteen. And let me back off the eye. You wanna you wanna go to somebody who you know is keeping these laws because they gonna guide you like Mac B said according to the Bible because that's really what we're talking about. Is we gotta filter everything through the Bible. We can't go off our own thought process. We don't have our own opinions of our own, uh, I believe this, I theorize that. We don't do that. <laughs> yeah. We go through the scriptures. Read that up. Rock 21 and 13. The knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood. Uh -huh. And his counsel is like a pure fountain of light. And his counsel is like the pure fountain of light. Mm -hmm. And to get that uh, pure, pure fountain of light, Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 14 is saying, the law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. The law, we have to go through the law. So a wise man will be keeping God's laws. And when you come to him for counsel, he's going to take you through the scriptures mm -hmm. on good counsel on what you should do with that matter. Come. I'll praise you. Let's go to uh, First, King, First Kings chapter 12 and verse 1. Now, this is right here going into... After King Solomon died, this is what a lot of Christians get the Bible twisted up about the split of the northern and the southern kingdom. Now, if you knew this, knew what happened in the split of the northern and southern kingdom, you'd know the difference between the Gentile and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Because it is the Gentiles of other nations and Gentiles that's uh, uh, in a Gentile state of mind. You can know the difference. But we ain't, we ain't going to touch too much on the split like that, but we finna touch on a council of, of, of one of the one of the brews that, 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 that went off. Mm -hmm. 
Go to uh, uh, First Kings chapter twelve and verse. No, start. You can start at verse. No, you go ahead and start at verse one. First Kings twelve and one. Mm -hmm. And Re Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were to come to Shechem to make him king. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon. And Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. Uh -huh. that they sent and called him and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam saying thy father made our yoke grievous now they tell, they tell him Rehoboam that Solomon had made the yoke grievous and he, he said that man they, they was building the temple at the time and that, it was that, that, that labor that they were doing was kind of hard on them this is what the people telling tell uh, uh, Rehoboam read Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou, make thou the grievous service of thy father, mm -hmm. and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us, lighter, and we will serve thee. Now they tell him, they tell real the bread bone, look, he said, look, if you make this this yoke lighter on us, man, we can, we'll serve you, man. Mm -hmm. Man, we just need this thing to ease up a little bit, man. This is what the people are asking. Read on. And he said unto them, Depart ye from thee from for three days. Mm -hmm. Then come again to me. And the people departed. Now what he now what what Rarebone finna do right now, he's finna go consult. He finna go get counsel. Because he know that he can't just make a, a, a full fledged answer right now. He, he was taught by the elders. He was taught by his father. Like we like we should like we was taught in his Bible what we should do. Take counsel. Because the Bible tells us to take counsel. And that's what he was doing. He was doing as he was taught. To go take some counsel. Read on up. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father uh -huh. while, he, while he yet lived. Now, the first counsel he went to was the same counsel that his father, King Solomon, had. Those were the counsels that he went to go counsel with. The, the counsel that King Solomon had. And even just touching on that, it's saying the... the the counselors that King Solomon had. We're talking about the King Solomon, mm -hmm. the most wisest right. man on the planet Earth. Right. Even yeah. he took counsel. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's something just to note about. Go ahead, up. Turn on it. Read, up. And King and King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, mm -hmm. and said, "How do ye advise that I may answer this people?" Now they finna tell them how to answer the how to answer the people. Mm -hmm. Read. Verse 7, and they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. Now, all they had to do is take the counsel of the old men. He knew that his father, he knew, he knew that his father was the wisest man that ever lived. He knew that his father had had peace all around him for 40 years. How could you have peace all around before you? Because he took good counsel. Mm -hmm. He he took wise counsel. But we're gonna keep reading. We don't know. Verse eight. But he forsook the counsel of the old men. But he forsook the counsel. He just came from having peace for forty years to forsaking the counsel of the people that that made sure the peace was for forty years. Read. Which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. Now, I mean, he been, instead of going to the council where his father had some great council of the elders, he went to go consult with his own boy. Yeah. And this council he was taking, uh, Jared, the road bone was taking, was the same council that the person he's dealing with, uh, what is the other one, uh, Jeroboam. <laughs> The person he was dealing with, that he, this the same counsel that had him moving back to Egypt because he was dealing wrong with with Solomon. Mm -hmm. It's the same counsel. He refused that counsel though, mm -hmm. even though it worked through the forty years of, of Solomon's uh, mm -hmm. reign. Mm -hmm. But he refused that and taking some immature, not no good for nothing counsel. Right? That's it. That's all it boils down to. Instead of going for the counsel of the elders, he gonna take it with me. 
man, look here, man. I'm going to talk to my homeboy, man. Right. She, hey, man, we got this good wine back here, man. Y'all come on back here, man. You know, I'm king now, too, man. Man, we in there. And that's the same right. equivalence. Like we said, we always want to bring it up to today. Or you got your little young knucklehead friends. Man, put that barber down, man. Man, why you going to do that? Why you wearing them little dangly things on your clothes? You know, why y'all doing that, man? Why y'all got to have sister have y'all head wraps looking like Harriet Tubman and stuff? All little, little shots, but then guess what? They going to get put to death if they don't repent and keep these commands. That's wrong counsel. The wrong counsel. Go ahead, up. Come there. Read it up. Verse 9. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy fathers did put upon us lighter. Now he now he going back and telling he telling the people counsel. He telling he telling his homeboys the counsel did the old that the elders said. He said, man, the elders told me to make the count make these people yoke uh, lighter. So watch what, watch what they said, though. Read verse 10. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto, the pe unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loin. <laughs> man, he said, <laughs> read that over again, man. Read, read that again, huh? You want the whole verse? No, then look, my little, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. Now, y'all know what a loin is. What's a loin? The thigh or the, you know, he said his little finger's going to be thicker than his father. He's going to be right. way harder right. than right. his father. Read on. And now, whereas my father did lad, lad you with heavy, with heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father has chastised you with whip, with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Now that's some that's that's a wicked that's a wicked that's a wicked that's a that's a wicked Negro man. That's wicked. That's somebody taking the wrong counsel. Somebody void of understanding. Somebody that guess what? This right here was a split. This was during the split right here of the northern and the southern kingdom. This right here. Sets the tone of the Bible going towards the New Testament and what Christ came back to put together when he was trying to put the family back together. Right. This sets the tone of somebody taking wrong counsel. In this day and time, like I said, bring it back up to prison, we need to get our mindset about taking the right counsel. Making sure that we don't make people yokes harder around us. Making sure that we don't make the yoke hard around our own necks, man. By not taking the great counsel that most High said in front of us, man. And, and just to show, just real quick, we know the counsel that he took was the wrong counsel because of history. But I'm going to tell you what Christ said. The elders told him right. Christ said in Matthew 23 and 11, For he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So the elders had told him the perfect counsel because that's the same thing that Christ said. He can't do it. But he ain't want to listen. But see, they don't want to go. And what it was uh, <laughs> that this time they had, uh, when they was taking the, the council he's talking about is uh, there was taxes that was taxed on to the northern kingdom because the northern kingdom was in up, up north where a lot, a lot of uh, merchandise and they was more rich, they were richer than the ones in the south. So they got taxed more, unlike the United States, taxed the poor and don't the rich don't get it. But Solomon was a right, he was judging righteous. He had the northern kingdom, hey, y'all making more money, you owe a little more tax. And then here the other one coming like, you better tax the crap out of them, you know. And that's what that's what was going on here when it's talking about that. Come on, on it. But the thing is, like we say, have one council of a thousand. Don't take counsel. Man, wicked, crooked counsel. We got to stay in the spirit, man. Be led by the spirit. Make sure brothers are getting the right counsel. And the right God is in that life, so we can be able to make it to the kingdom. Man. Mm -hmm. uh, those is on Facebook. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'll pray to the Most High. Uh, you got a law out. Uh, those is on uh, uh, YouTube. Kind of tripping, man. Well, few on the update, but it's okay. Uh, those that get to the GoFundMe, I'll praise the Most High for that.
uh, that money will be used according to how the most high directs it and not how we do by our own will. Give me that Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. You know, we always want to go back there. That other, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because even like uh, Captain Jeroboam brought up the, with the class, that's one of the main things that we got to put off, man, not leaning on our own understanding. Bring it up. Book of Proverbs at 3 verse 5. <laughs> <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Lean not unto our own understanding. It's going into the class, man. The counsel that we should be getting is the, from the Bible. And the Bible only. Lean not on our own understanding, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Brother. And we did. We say shalom. 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 Yeah, the whole law is the myriad. Bring them out. That's the law here.